Well, the decision we made about Temple Island actually sat within itself. It, right. It, it made itself when you just break down the numbers uh, of gross value added to the British, uh, the British economy, um, jobs created, tax revenue. Uh, the arena was not the best use of that site, so it made it made its own decision. Well, then that obviously meant that that site is not there, no longer available for the arena. Um, and then YTL obviously have their yeah. aircraft hangers on the edge of it, it, you know on, on the edge of the the city, and then they had a they were obviously waiting to make a proposal to build an arena up there and make use of those. And mm. and uh, what happened last night was the planning permission went through, as Ivan said. We are now on course to having the third biggest arena in the UK, the most sustainable arena um, in the UK. Right. Um, and dare I say, just one other thing, but the, the arena is. I said to them, we we'd love sustainability to be at the heart of what you do he said there's a really easy way to minimize the amount of carbon the arena generates that's reuse an existing building right. if you build an arena from scratch you generate fresh demand for steel and concrete two of the dirtiest industries on the planet so uh, this this hits so many uh ticks so many boxes for us but as i said the temple Art decision takes care of itself really the other uh the other very practical piece of this is if an artist like Beyonce, one is wouldn't pay ten thousand seater, but but if she was coming there, she'd turn up with about fifty articulated trucks. Right. Where you know, a Temple Island uh, site takes could had a capacity for docking about four. Uh, Brabazon takes about ninety. Right. So if you are a manager of a major act and you're thinking about the logistics, where are you going to go? Sure. A place where you have to do the logistics of lining up uh, four trucks when you're bringing fifty, and how you can yeah. organise that, and then I mean, where just gonna, sporting events and where they going to park and and, yeah. and TV gonna, and, and those wagons, yeah. and okay. it's a security issue as well. You've got the arena right next to the train station. If you if you phone up and say there's a there's a you know there's a bomb or something at the arena, what are you going to close down? Let's go to a couple of things that some of the naysayers are, uh, are saying. You know, it's wonderful. It's, it sounds like it almost sounds too good to be true. We're getting this arena uh, for free. In other words, it's not the council isn't taking any risk. Taxpayers aren't taking any right. financial risk. Uh, but there is a cost uh, with regards to uh, infrastructure that has to be put in. I understand why TL are covering some of that cost, uh, but local authorities need to cover that too. Is that right? Yes, yeah, split is split through with the combined authority with our partners. But first of all, we'd have to up grade the infrastructure anyway it's a it's a few million pounds it's minuscule compared to the 160 plus million that we'd have had to borrow mm. to build the arena on temple Island. and bear in mind when you go down with a major infrastructure project like that if we were driving the delivery and we are not developers uh what do you think would have happened to that cost once they dug into the ground today we'd have been looking at tens of millions on top of that it was, it was a financial catastrophe for the city that cost from memory plugging out the air was about five million for infrastructure yeah. is that is that That's correct right. that does sound like a really tiny amount of money uh, is it enough this is the question to to cover what the highways agencies want done uh it's it's one of our major um arteries isn't it the m4 yeah. and m5 around there and and they get they get clogged at the best of times yeah. but, look, but look at the two the two nights we had a test case the two massive attack gigs 13,000 people attended in a temporary pop-up arena. We, they haven't even put the infrastructure in yet. Mm. And the response on terms of how the logistics went about getting people in and out was fantastic. We had yeah. shuttle buses going from the, the city centre mm. and, and, and from roundabout as well. So I think it's been tested. Um, the infrastructure needs to go in anyway because there are 8,000 homes going up that part of the city. Right. So we would have had to invest anyway. And we want to invest in the infrastructure anyway because we're trying to provide alternatives to cars. There'll be a new train station, a new metro bus stop there. Okay. I was going to say, let, let, let's face it, even if the arena was in the city centre, you'd still get a lot of people coming in by car anyway, so I guess. And I, uh, that wouldn't kind of align itself to the introduction of a clean air zone. And, and, and again, just run through the scenario. So we estimate that a 12,000 person sellout event would bring about 3,500 cars into the city. Some people say that's too many. So let's halve it, all right? Let's be really optimistic. 1,700 cars driving into the middle of the city for mm. a seven o'clock gig start. Uh, it just doesn't bear thinking about. It. Then we've put a we've put a clean air zone in there as well. I mean, people be saying, "Well, how does that work?" That's subject to government clearance as well. It, it, well there yeah. will be a clean air zone, yeah. But obviously, well, you're quite emphatic about that. There will definitely oh, yeah, we, will be one. We will. We will we'll deli we'll deliver a clean air zone. But the, obviously, we need government to do its part because they be, they're a bit a bit slow on it. Um, so yeah, I mean, putting it in the middle of the city, drawing all those cars in, all those people in for a seven o'clock gig start. I think there was a lot of myth about how much um, impact the arena would have on the city centre economy. Um, most of the time, they're empty sheds. Uh, and, and again, it would have come with us taking your council taxpayers' money, yeah. borrowing £160 million to build it, all at our risk. 
private sector runs it with no risk, takes the operation. If they don't make money, they could walk away. Mm. Right? We take all the risk. This, that would have been disastrous. Now it's all the risk is in Marvin, the private sector. Uh, w- one of the big criticisms will be, and, and people will say, because they'll look at it in a binary way sometimes, you know. So what's the benefit br- for Bristol then? What, what is the benefit for Bristol? So you, you've spelled out that there's no financial risk in that sense, apart from some infrastructure, which is minimal, um, because much of it will be there already. So what's the benefit for Bristol then? If it wasn't in right bang in the middle, what does Bristol get out of it? Well, we're on a very brutal level, we yeah. will get the business rates <laughs> and, and, and all the overflow. Oh, that's not brutal. That's, yeah, no, yeah. that's financial. That's <laughs> important. Which is massively important. And we'll get the, uh, the, the number of people staying in the city as well because, again, there's a link-up between uh, that development and all the other things that are happening in Bristol. It's not as though it's happening in isolation. Yeah. Temple Island is going to be a bigger scheme, 500 homes, in- conference centre, hotel mm. and, and retail linked to a brand new university half billion pound university behind a train station that we are going to be developing as well and i was up in downing street uh, just yesterday and they specifically mentioned temple meads and they've got to get the money out so that we can get sure. temple meads revamp western harbour so the amount of development happening in the middle of the city the invest, investment in the middle is in complement to what's going on yeah. um on the uh, you know uh, uh, up at the uh, brabbers and hangers and and it is going to be called the YTL Bristol Arena. Right. This is Bristol's name. It's going to, like I said, third biggest arena. It's going to be an international destination sure. a- arena, and people will be coming to Bristol. And I think it's a city growing up. You know, we've long lamented actually the absence of world class facilities. We will now have one of the world's premier um, arenas. Why are they going to Cardiff? Why are they going to Birmingham? We want them to come to Bristol. Yeah, we will. And and actually, I think. People need to enter into the space of that International Conference Centre. I went to Edinburgh's International Conference Centre. Absolutely fantastic. Big auditorium, 1,400, 1,500 people, the breakout rooms. Bringing conf- conferencing is, is, will be would be fantastic for mm-hmm. the city centre economy. I think about that next to the university train station. Sure. Conferences, people arrive, they stay for two nights yeah. in the hotels, they go out to eat locally, Don't, more than they do for... Um, for gigs. Yeah. yeah, for gigs. Yeah. Um, so having uh, having the Bristol uh, Conference Centre in the middle of in the middle of the city uh, will just be again, which is a phenomenal complement to to the maturing of our city. And in my time, we've grown massively anyway in terms of hotel beds and spaces in the city, Marvin. I know that you've got to go. We want to get you uh, and uh, some of your um, uh, uh, contenders for the mayoral election in this studio uh, very soon in the next three or four weeks. Um, are you good with that? Uh, give me a call. Yeah, Brilliant. No problem. All right. Uh, Mayor of Bristol, Marvin Rees uh, on BCFM Radio. Thank you very much indeed.